Hey, welcome back to another episode of the WordPress Client Portal series. In the last video, we talked about checkouts, carts, pay for order, WooCommerce, all sorts of stuff. In this video, we're gonna continue that, and I have to start off by saying that I was absolutely duped. I did not realize that this was the case, and I mentioned in the last video, but I gotta mention it right off the top in this video, is I did not realize that the cart like templates, the cart pages, the checkout pages that I was seeing, I did not realize that those were built I thought they were built in in bricks and were like default, you know, templates through there. They are not. They were built in, uh, in in WooCommerce specifically in the block editor. And um, I w I will say that I'm I'm absolutely impressed with the way that this this gets handled and the way that this uh, that this works here. Uh, if you download WooCommerce and you look at it on a uh, you know even if you have bricks installed or whatever, this just never happened when I was using Elementor in the past. Uh, maybe it's just because it's you know obviously newer and I haven't I haven't messed with uh, Elementor and WooCommerce in a bit, but Bricks, WooCommerce, and obviously you know WordPress at the core of it will give you these like like a, a cart template for this is the empty cart right this little frowny face and all that, uh, and then it will give you with a filled cart it will give you this type of layout and then with checkout it will also give you a very similar two column layout like this. And you can, and that's the new block way. But the trouble with me, and I don't, and I'm gonna have to see here, is if you can see on the right, some active extensions do not yet support this block and may impact the shopper experience. So like I have to switch to classic cart seemingly if I want to use the payment gateways that I that I want to use, which is uh, the, the QuickBooks Intuit payment gateway. So I'm not 100% sure honestly how to navigate that. But regardless though. While I do enjoy, and I'm, I'm very appreciative that this is possible in the block editor, I don't think that I'm going, for my purposes, going to build this in the block editor and utilize these because one, I don't even really need the cart, so I want it to be super basic and simple. But the other thing is, it does seem like uh, I don't even know who who to who to I don't even know who to give credit to anymore because it, it seems like every time I do, it's the wrong it's the wrong team. But if you go to, for instance, Bricks templates, and we've talked about this obviously in, in past videos here. We, you know, I started one for pay for order. I started one for different things. If you click add template, there's a ton of these over here. So I don't know if this is coming from WooCommerce side or Bricks side or whoever's doing it. Okay, the the, the having all of these options is super awesome, and it has one for cart and empty cart. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to utilize these as opposed to, um, you know, like the the block editor type stuff. The only thing that's uh, that we're navigating here is like, okay, so you have WooCommerce cart and an empty cart. These are templates, right? Well, then you also have a cart page. So I think I'm gonna try to possibly, I'm probably, probably gonna delete what I have and then kind of start fresh because I do want it to be, uh, I do want to try to manage everything in Bricks if I can. If I'm, if I'm building a lot of stuff in Bricks, if I'm building most of the page stuff and templating everything like that in Bricks, I think it just makes sense to do basically everything through there. But I I'm, I gotta say, I'm extremely impressed with what uh, what the block editor is capable of here uh, with the WooCommerce stuff. So having said all that, what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to attempt to kind of do some of those that templating and everything like that outside of the Gutenberg environment and in the Bricks environment. And luckily, the Academy, the you know the docs for Bricks are crazy good, and uh, the cart WooCommerce. Uh, if you go to this link, I'll have it in the description here shows you exactly what to do. And it shows you you have to get rid of that. You have to put in the uh, the short code for WooCommerce. And then you have to just kind of go to town as far as like uh, utilizing the bricks templates for cart and empty cart and everything like that. So let's just dive in and go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create these first. I'm going to say WooCommerce cart. I'm going to say WooCart. And we'll do that. We'll say publish. We will edit that with bricks. We'll come over here. We'll add a new one. And we will do empty cart. I'm more concerned about the empty cart, um, honestly, because I don't want, uh, I don't want uh, people to, uh, I mean, I, I don't want them to use the cart, so I want the empty cart thing to kind of make sense. Okay. And then um, we have to get out of this. We have to get out of this for now, actually. No, actually, we want to be here. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this. We're going to come over here to the sidebar here. We have cart, filled cart. Again, super impressed by this, but... We're not gonna do that because it's just gonna make my life more complex and we don't need to do that. So the way that they say to do it is you look at these docs is you have to remove that cart and instead replace it with this thing, 
or utilize the short code element. Now, I think, don't quote me, can I just drop this in here like this? Oops, maybe, maybe not like that, maybe like this. We'll see, I don't know if that's actually gonna work. Uh, and then let's go empty cart, and then just for fun, let's say, actually, I don't wanna do any of this first. I wanna see kind of exactly what happens. So if we go to, now if we go to, uh, let's pop back out to maybe this. And let's go to slash cart. Just like the template is empty. Okay, here's what we're gonna do instead. We're gonna copy this. We're gonna delete that. Actually, is there a short code? Where's our short code at? Short, short code, write the short code. All right, that should definitely work. I don't know if it's gonna work just yet because I think there's we're still empty, I think, but there we go, short code is good enough. And then empty cart, so this is what we should see. Let me say this, and then your cart is empty, just as a test case. No, okay. Well, actually, I don't know if, the cart actually might be full currently right now. So let's double check that. Um, empty cart, empty cart template, cart. Let's go back to our bricks templates. Let's go to our regular cart, edit with bricks. We got empty cart here, we have our regular cart here. And then if we do a section, and there's, um, there's some cart things here. So like add to cart, cart totals, cart items. If we drop that into the appropriate spot, great, thank you. Boom, how about now? There we go, there's something, okay, cool. All right, so that's nice, I like that. Now what happens if we X, cart is empty. Damn, that's nice. Okay, cool. Now, I love this because, again, we could do it stuff in the block editor and all that, but this is just like, first of all, I just want to take a quick second to say that, like, I used to have to do this with Elementor and Jet Woo Builder. At a, that's what, you know, the last one is. And, and this being, you know, even with Core kind of, you know, being almost a part of it, or it could be a part of it, and then Bricks. I mean, it's just, it's very nice how, like, there's way less going on, and there's just, uh, it just seems a lot a lot more uh, a lot more concise so the fact that I could literally just write whatever I want in the empty cart it automatically knows I don't have to do any anything extra as far as setting conditions or anything that's awesome what do I want to say on the empty cart um, I don't know because I never want them to be here anyway it's tough but your cart is empty I would say maybe like and then just like to be minimum viable product button and we'll say like return to dashboard, oops, if I could spell, and then do link, internal page, dashboard, and dashboard. And then we'll just throw a button style of action on there. So when we update all that, it, it updates, and then we go here, and now we have your cart is empty, and it's always gonna know that, that, that that's you know what it is when the cart is empty and all that, and that's perfect. Now we're gonna have an issue because I don't know how to get a product back in here. Well, I mean, I have to go to a direct product page, I guess, potentially and do it. Um, so let's go to products, all products, and let's just like go to view. I'm not sure what our single looks like. We haven't gotten to the single and we never really, again, it's one of those things where we don't want it to be a single. Um, and I'm sure this is actually probably from, the, from Gutenberg as well, I would have to imagine. So, okay, cool. So let's operate with this, um, I'm giving you, you know, I'm giving you a tutorial here. Maybe you don't even, maybe you haven't even asked for this one because like this is something that, uh, you know, actually I did, I did just have an idea though, just a random other idea is like, I wonder if there's, there's empty cart and there's cart. The thing that I am kind of, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I always have a, a, a problem with this in a way. What if I want to put a heading on both of these pages but they're pulling from different, what if I wanna put like a title, just like something that says cart? I don't really wanna put it in independently on both. Uh, I would rather have it like across both of them. So that's that's a weird thing. I mean, maybe you could do it in the, maybe you could do it here, I guess, potentially. I mean, if you really wanted to, I don't really like mixing like this, but if you went just for fun and I went like this, there's also probably a way to do it. I'm just I'm just playing around here. Just 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 humor me for one moment. 
can't do it there. Got to do it here. Yeah, see, there's just not enough. There's not, I mean, I could probably do something there, but that's that's the thing is like, that's confusing to me now. And now I'm like two different builders and it's it's weird. So I don't know. That's that's fine for what it is. It's it's outside, you know, like the the container and the sections and everything like that that I've created in bricks. I'm not sure. Hey, uh, quick interruption, Mark from the future here. I don't know what was going on the day that I filmed this. I'm sitting here editing it now, and I, I realized that I must have been having a brain aneurysm. I'm not exactly sure what was going on there. The cart and checkout pages work very similarly to like one or two episodes ago when we talked about the My Account situation. Those pages, like cart, checkout, My Account, are they're pages. And then we have those templates, and the templates fill in basically into, if, you're, if they're set up properly, fill into those pages. So when I was doing that stuff, when you know, when you just saw here, you know, a couple clips ago here or whatever, it, like where I put the WooCommerce short code in here, you don't need to do that. And I mean, it works, but you don't need to do that. Um, just do it, do it the normal way. Like create the page, or the page is already created. All it has is just a title. Then just edit the page with bricks, and then you come to the cart, like you're building the cart page, and then your structure for your cart page could be like the minimum viable product when I was talking about like title and everything, put that title in here, create a section container, put the title in here, and then put the short code that I that I put into the other thing, like put WooCommerce cart into here, into the actual builder. And then I just thought about this now as well. You can create your cart and then your check, your, and I'm going back and forth here, but your checkout works the exact same way, right? So you have a heading and a short code here. This is just your WooCommerce checkout short code. And then your templates for these, your template for cart, empty cart, and checkout all control what is inside this, you know, short code area. But I don't know if any of you are ever familiar with this. This just came across my mind. Did you ever have a situation um, in the past where you kind of had those, you wanted a more customized checkout experience, not just the, however the template looks and however, like, outside of you know, the fields and the totals and everything. You could put whatever you want in here. You could put testimonials up here on the top of your checkout. You could put them at the bottom. You could put reviews, like anything like that, that whole, like, back, like you know, like I, I've used cart flows in the past, something like that, like to, to customize your, your stuff. So um, long and short of it, sorry about that. Sorry for the interruption here, but just do it like that. It's way simpler. It's way more straightforward. The rest of this video may not line up because I, for some, again, for some reason, I don't, I don't understand what I was doing that day. But um, it all does work the same. Just realize that it works the in a similar fashion to my account. It has a page. You put like this that you kind of like build out that page, and then within that page, there's certain short codes that the templates can pull into, depending on if the cart's empty, cart's full, if you're on the checkout, whatever you know. So, all right, back to your regular scheduled programming. Thank you for listening. So we have an empty cart. That's fine. We have our uh, main cart here that we never want anybody to touch. If we refresh here on our cart, we have this. Now, I saw something incredible, and I'm not exactly sure if, and also, well, no, this is the cart. I, I'm, I saw something incredible in these docs, and I want to see if we can do it. So we talked about this. This We deleted the thing. We added a cart. We added an empty cart. They automatically automatically support and everything like that. We don't. What we don't have here is, um, and I'll do this real quick. If we do section container and then we go to container and we do, um, I mean, I could do a class and everything like that, but just just for the, the idea here, grid and we say grid template columns. Um, if we do a two, let's do a, a two, a two one or a three one, let's do a three two. And then over here, we would have our, there's another. Oops, there we go. We'd have our cart totals over here. Now again, you could style this how you want. You could put that at the bottom if you want, everything like that. But like honestly, I thought the the other one looked very good, and it it was the the dual column one rather than like below. So how Thomas has it here in this in this description is like cart items is up here, and then cart totals is down here. I really do like that that side by side option, um, and you can build that obviously just with whatever. I don't. We could style it maybe a little differently or something, but like you know we can build that. So, um, so that's that. Those are those individual pieces you can play around and do that. The other thing was, if we go back over here, then we can you know we get we got down to this part. But there's cart items, cart totals, cart coupons, everything like that. Like we have, we're not really gonna have the coupon thing. Um, but the cart items 
that we that we put up there. Okay, you can obviously adjust with you know if there's stuff in it. If not, but then the cart contents loop. This is like super interesting because in my mind, right, we don't. This is the cart, and again, we're probably not going to be like playing with this that much. But if you could change where where like maybe you don't want them to be able to change quantity or you don't want them to be able to change price or you don't want to see this image, like there is definitely a way to do that kind of in bricks where you can completely, you know, create like a block, create a div, put the the information in there and then you do this. So I may end up trying to do this, but in my mind, the trouble is that the checkout page, I feel like would be even cooler for me to do this with. So if we go just quickly down to the checkout, does it look like we can do something similar here with our checkout? So we have to do it the same way and then check out order view, check out this, okay. Hmm. Then our thank you template, love that, pay template. Okay, this is our pay template. This is definitely what we're gonna need. Okay, so our quantities here. If I, see, see what I'm saying? This, if I could change this up a little bit, I'm not sure if I'd have to, but like quantity wise, I don't necessarily know if that's 100% needed, but I don't know. Regardless, let's keep moving because uh, I think this is all really good stuff. So if we go back over here, actually, if you go to the elements, you can hide things like you can disable the link to the product. You can disable the thumbnail and things like that, which is very sweet that you can do all that straight through here. Um, and then over here, you can like disable cross cells and all that sort of stuff. So it does have an, a, a lot of this. Uh, I mean, I was literally doing this back in the day with Jet Woo Builder and everything, which was uh, it worked, but it was definitely more of an add-on than directly in the builder. So I love that they have all this. Um, to me, again, I don't really have a strong use for the cart on this, but if I was building a traditional uh, setup, then that would make more sense. But I, I love the option that we can we can kind of do all this. I'm going to leave the cart as is now because honestly, there is a chance that I don't even like utilize the cart at all. So I don't want to continue to harp on that. I think for regardless of who you are, the checkout is absolutely gonna be important. So let's go take a look and figure that out now. So if we go back to uh, here and we go to our checkout page and we edit this, I think this is gonna be the exact same type of situation. So what we've done here already is we've disabled, yeah, we've disabled the, 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 the checkout way that it was. I'll transform this back into blocks just for a second. So this is what it looked like before. So take a mental snapshot of the, the nice, beautiful thing that they have created here now. Um, just as a fun example too, how much of this can you get rid of? See, like, I don't feel like I need to write my address in every time. I don't feel like that's like something that's 100% needed. So that's kind of interesting um, that we can or cannot get rid of some of those things. But regardless, um, this is the block thing. I've talked about it. I think maybe some certain payment processors uh, have got got up to it, and, and some haven't. Uh, you know, they don't. They maybe they maybe it's like this has to be a block. So the the one that I'm using, I don't think has you know a block in a way, um, which is fine for now because I'm not going to use this. What we're going to do instead is we're just going to go back over here and we're going to delete this checkout block here. We will come back to that probably at some point in the future, make more content on that. But if we go to slash short code, and in here, I think it's just woo checkout. Let me double check here. Yeah, okay. Let's copy that, drop it in here, update. So now what we need to do is we need to go back to our templates and we need to create a checkout one. And honestly, we're gonna, we already have that pay one, but we're gonna need a checkout one as well. And I'm wondering how those are gonna intertwine. So that'll be interesting, probably the same way, probably you know the same way as the cart and empty cart does. But, um, but yeah, so let's go woo, checkout. There we go, boom. And then edit with bricks. Okay, so we now have that. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. We should be good there. So now we have our checkout. And what we're gonna wanna do in here is there's gonna be checkout order, what does this say? Order review, checkout customer details. Okay, never puts it in the right container. All right, so your order, place order. And let me see, let me go back to this real quick just so they can so we have, so just so you guys know too, so it's check out customer details and check out order review. So this is like the one on the right and then there we go. All right, cool. So if we go to our container and we go 
just for fun, we do a little grid and we do um, a auto two. Oops, yeah, I think. Um, well, we need a block in there, I guess. Yeah. How did I do that last time? Did I mess that up? I don't know. Um, regardless, let's do a, let's wrap that in a block. And then let's do another block down here as we grab our order details. Uh, actually, customer. Check out customer. And I think we'll try this option, wrap this in a block. We'll just do that. That looks pretty good. Cool. All right, so we have our billing details. We have this. And let's go back and we will check out our checkout page. Check out. We should have something in the cart there. Cool, yeah, so we have UX design, boom, awesome. I'm loving it so far. I've never wanted this on here. Let's actually do, is there a way for me to do it over here? It probably would be. Let me see if I can. I wanted to show you guys this. I don't think I did. This is what the other one looks like for the pay for order, which we have not technically gotten to yet. Let me see if there's anything in my cart. There's nothing in my cart. Uh, let me see if I can add, we're, we're over on the Elementor one, but let me see if I can add a product. So if we add a product to our cart over here, again, this is like Jet Woo Builder and all that. We have this, we proceed to our checkout. And then this is our kind of our experience over here on the other one, right? And there's a couple of different things too that I will eventually uh, will eventually talk about. This, this drop down up here is actually that multiple address thing that I talked about a while ago, um, but that's something kind of interesting. And then if we go back to um, our order here, if we go back on our new section here, the interesting thing is like, again, additional information. There are plugins that you can use to get rid of that stuff. However, I wanna see if we click on our checkout order things here, remove billing fields. Oh my, this is lovely. Okay, so can you actually remove first name? Wow, that's amazing. Okay, that's awesome. This is amazing. I'm just getting geeked out there. Sorry about that. But yeah, so like um, personally, like, I don't know. I mean, like really, do you need street address? Do you need town and all this? I mean, it's kind of interesting. I guess you can just kind of do whatever you want here. I mean, there's no shipping, obviously. I would love to remove this additional information. Can we do that? Don't know about that. There might be a different way. Hide title. So you can remove the title there. Hide additional information. Damn, these guys are good, man. Holy cow. Look at that. Yeah, so I'm I'm in I'm in love with this. Like it's it's easy to see, it's easy to see that. Uh, and I think this is going extremely I'm lo I'm loving the whole situation. Oh, you can change the title. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, title da, 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 payments um, not too much terms. Not too much different stuff you could do there. Um, but it does make sense. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it looks pretty, um, pretty standard, pretty decent. But again, sorry to make this a WooCommerce bricks review, but, um, I'm just super excited about that. So again, I, I love the, I love this checkout experience here. That is awesome. What I would love to see next now is because again, I keep saying this, but that also isn't even what I'm personally care about. I really only care about the payment page. To be completely frank, all that other stuff, like I may never actually use. So this is the page for me that still really matters. And I think that they have some examples over here as well. Um, where's the, where's this pay page right here. So the pay template for the situation where a visitor gets a link, it's unpaid order. Da, da, da. It's like checkout order table and checkout order payment. Okay. So let me go into here. And I think we already, I think we already kind of do have those uh, set up here. But let's go back to our our template here. Well, actually, interestingly, this is we definitely still want this to be our our checkout. Uh, where's our templates here? Let's go to our templates. So our pay for order template. That is our our pay. And if we go here, so we have all this, right? So this is our order, our order table and our order payment. 
Okay, let's do the same thing, maybe just for fun. Um, where is, uh, da, 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 let's go grid and let's go three, two. Um, well, actually, I mean, they don't, mm, the thing is they don't really have to do it that way, but let's just do, let's just do, let's do three, two. That's fine. Um, okay, cool. That's fine for now. So then. If we go back to where's our checkout thing? I mean, again, I'm I'm pretty much I'm liking it. I'm I'm liking it for the most part. Is there any options that we haven't seen here? Like our header. Okay, these are mostly just kind of like styling-ish type things, and then our payment stuff. You know, same type of thing. So nothing crazy there from a content perspective that we can change. But we really, really wouldn't expect anything. The trouble here, <clears throat> I'll tell you this straight up. The trouble here is that without without having your payment thing in here it's very difficult to see and again i don't have a, a design in mind but like you'd want to make this obviously as clean and as straightforward as possible i'm honestly not sure where this is coming from there's probably a way to, to adjust this as well but um but yeah i'm liking i'm liking where these uh where these templates are headed there's a few other things i want to cover here that can maybe give you some tips and some ideas and all that but uh specifically so i can continue to build this out a little bit for you and actually give you something that you can that you can see uh, more so than just us playing around with the different templates and everything if, what we're looking at here is a page from my uh kind of my proposal template for the agency and discovery and website architecture ux design copywriting like all these in my mind are like the services in which we offer in a way like all of this, like this whole section here is technically website creation. So each one of those individual little service items that we provide is are a, are a, are a part of that thing. Now I would love to do something where I could like kind of maybe bundle them in a way where on, uh, you know, on this page it shows like, you know, this much for website creation, this much for the subscription, for the management, everything like that. Uh, we'll, we'll call that like, you know, version 1.2 or whatever. But what I do want to show you is I'm going to take all of these. We already have UX and UI in there. I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to put them into the as products. And I'm going to I'm going to do exactly what we've done here. We're going to if we go to products right now, we have UX design, UI design. And these are simple products and their prices are set to zero. Now the reason I'm doing this, and this is totally different than the way I did it last time in the in the in the version two uh, two of the portal, is the reason I'm gonna make them zero is because I'm gonna make them zero, and then I'm gonna create orders each time. I'm gonna create a proposal, send the proposal out, it gets signed, and then I'm gonna create the order. Um, they're gonna sign the contract, then I'm gonna create the order on the portal, and the the order order is going to this right here. When I do this here in a second, this right here, this. Uh, you know, like breakdown of the order here, the line items is going to match this exactly. So it's like, there's nothing They're They're not, they're not confused in any way. It is exactly what it is. Now, the only question that would, that's going to end up coming up is like, if you do two payments or three payments, as opposed to one payment, these, the way that I've seen this done technically one month and two month, or like if you're, if you're doing like multiple payments like that, that's technically set up a lot of times as a subscription that ends. So it's like, the t this would be a two month subscription, this would be a three month subscription, and it would just be the, the price of it. We could we could do that, um, but for the sake of this, currently where we're at, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna add those products, and then I'm gonna show you exactly the way that it would be. So we could do one, just as an example, like discovery and website architecture. If we go to products, we add new. And again, I would actually, what I would probably do, I'm gonna do it like this instead, is I'm going to duplicate this product so I don't have to change a couple of the settings that were already there. I'm gonna add the title. I'm gonna delete this. And again, this is kind of like your process steps, like charge for every single process step, right? So product image, we probably don't even really need that because we're, we're taking that out. We're not really gonna show that anywhere. But again, it's a simple product. It's virtual. Um, it's our regular price is zero. It's, uh, it's categorized under website creation. Um, and that's pretty much all we need. I mean, we could probably put like maybe a short description in or something, but I don't know if that automatically goes where I'd want it to go. So for instance, what I mean by that is it would be nice to potentially uh, see like right here, it would be nice to potentially see the, the little bit of items that we have underneath, just like we do in this, you know, like for instance, like build at 40 cents per word or whatever. If if I could make that happen, then I then it would be nice. But 
other than going in manually, which I wouldn't want to do this every single time because this this information that I'm talking about would not change. Other than going in here and saying like something like this with this meta, but I, I don't actually know I don't actually know if that actually does anything. I'll put that in there for now, but I'm I'm almost certain I don't know, I don't actually know if that does anything. Okay, so it, okay, so you can add meta like that, but that's not that's not what we want at all. So yeah, I don't I definitely don't want to do that. But it's cool you can do that, but I don't want to do that. So um so yeah, it's not really the end of the world. Um really not a big deal. And uh yeah, cool. So that all right, so I'll add the rest of those products in there because I need to do it anyway, and then I will show you kind of what that's gonna look like. All right, I went ahead and added every single one of those line items into the actual products on WooCommerce. Now, I have a couple thoughts here, but I really love this concept uh, because I think it's gonna work extremely well because if those are your products, like those are the services that you offer, you know, pieces of your process and everything like that, I if you looked at the product list at, on the on the version two portal, there is a shit ton, and and there still will be uh, probably a reasonable amount because like there might be like projects and stuff, but at the core of it, for website creation, there should only be those like these you know eight of them or whatever. Right now we only have one management plan, so everybody should technically kind of be on that same management plan, or like it'll be slightly different in a way, but it'll be it'll actually like the the, the subscription in and of itself is is the same. So just trying to standardize it to a certain degree. But when everything's zero here, the cool part is you can pull these products in, you can change the price as a one-off because every one is gonna be different, and then that'll show up on that order. So for instance, if we go back to, uh, if we go back to WooCommerce orders, we come over here on our, our test order here. And the one thing I don't like here is I'm not sure how you can like re, um, I don't know if you can like reorder them, which is a little annoying. I don't, I don't, I've never, I've never had that problem, but I thought that that would be something that was possible, but I guess not. So if we just add these in order here, so like discovery and then, um, you know, uh, what do we got here? Uh, just, I did it in backwards order. So discovery, UX, copywriting, UI, UX, design, copywriting, uh, UI, and then what else? Uh, base page template project base page template. I actually thought of something as I'm doing this. Template and project. There we go. Okay, we add all those products. Boom, lovely. Now here's the one thing: is if you have any products though, okay? If you have any of these like service line items that do have a standard fee, uh, and you're and you're most likely not going to lower the fee because if you do lower the fee, then it does this weird thing where it says like a discount, and you don't really want that. Like for instance, if your base if your base development fee is always a certain amount of money, then you could just set that as the actual product cost instead of zero, and then do it that way. But you know, so that's the idea. But if we if we went through and we like added all of these things here real quick, if we went like 12, 14, whatever, if we just click like this and we say twelve, and then we say 14 and then we say I don't know 14 44 12 uh, whatever 14 14 44 and then 12 I'm not going to do all these right now but okay something like that and then we say update oh I don't know if I actually did that okay and then um and then if we go to this page now this is what I would love this is what I want my clients to see okay I want them to see the proposal. I want them to sign the proposal. I want them to sign the MSA. I want them to get this link or whatever to pay here. And I want them to just simply see, okay, it's like this is exact. If you looked at the proposal, this is exactly the same way. I've done this before where it's just like one item and it just says website creation. You know, again, it's just it's just where I'm at right now and what I want to do. But I want them to see all this and I want them to be able to pay for it. Cool. Now, the one other thing is like this is all the website creation that's well and good. I would love... I, I really want to look into this. I would love, I don't know if this is the product to do this with, but there's two things that like I would like to think about here. When somebody purchases a website with us, I want them to you know buy the website part of it and write, and there's, there's a payment method piece there that we need to discuss, but I want them to, there's two things they're buying, the website creation and then normally management and then potentially some other growth services or something. But 
I want them to be able to do that. There's a couple different ways you can go about it. Um, bundling was one idea I thought. I would love, love, love if I could somehow show these as like a, like like just like how the, the, the proposal is, like subcategories of website creation. So like website creation in this case would cost like 52, 40 or whatever, but all of those things have their own line items. So you can, you can see how it all sums up. But then, because like the idea would be like, that's for website creation, okay, but there'd be another section kind of below that says um, website management. Now, honestly, I'm just not sure if there's like an extra woo plugin or something that I could that I could handle that. I know I could add the subscription to this and then it would, they would, they've done, I've done that many times where, and we can show that, where like we add a subscription as a product, we add it to this order and then they're paying like, 52 let's just let's just say easy numbers let's say it was 5500 it was 52 for the the website and and then 300 for the recurring they would pay that all at once and then and then the, the payment method would get charged recurringly for that 300 i know that's possible we could show like i said we could show that so i know this video was probably a little bit shorter than the other ones but i want to end it here because we're right on the cusp of starting to really talk about like how we're gonna relate the other things to the orders to the products and everything like that based off of our initial pre-planning so the next thing that we probably should think about and consider doing is like you're going to want to know how to relate the projects that you are getting and how do you, how do you manage projects and also bill for them and make sure there's like a solid connection so your clients can kind of understand where all the money is going for what projects what the status of the projects are there's a lot that's going to be going on into that. So again, that's the next step. Um, look forward to that one. If you're get, enjoying the series, getting any value out of it, please click the like button, subscribe for more content like this. And uh, thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.